Shut up and sit down. Hey folks, this is Tony Day. Today what we're going to be doing is looking at color science across some different brands and different cameras. And what we want to do is determine whether or not color science really is more of a function of the brand or if it's more of a function of what we do with data after we get everything put into our preferred look in Rec. 709. Now obviously if you're shooting baked in color profiles in photography or in videography or for broadcast or whatever it is, if you're baking stuff in, obviously whatever the camera's doing is gonna be important. You know, you might prefer the look of one color profile uh, over another, but when it comes to log and raw, it's really not as big of a difference. Where there is more of a difference tends to be in how much data is actually captured. And I'm not the only one to really think this way. If you have looked at Steve Yedlin's work when it comes to color science and display preparation, he really has the same kind of view on it that our cameras are more of data boxes or data uh, capture boxes more than they are special magical devices that you know one brand has some kind of special sauce over another. Um, it's more about the data and then you know having the skill or having the tools that you need to produce images that you like. What I want to do is kind of challenge the conceptions that maybe some of you have in regards to color science in a demonstration here where we take five different cameras. Uh, they are different brands, not five brands, but they are different brands of cameras that are used and it's, they're shot in RAW, some of them are shot in LOG, and I want us to explore that and really see if that color science difference is as important as uh, we may have thought to begin with. What we're gonna do is we're not going to A, B cameras or uh, shots back and forth real fast or um, wipe them back and forth. What's important for us to do is look at each image on its own merits and determine whether or not there is any major differences or relevant differences that would matter to the viewer when it comes to color science. Now how we're going to achieve that is using a palette cleanser and it's going to be just a black frame in between each of the images. So it will refresh our eyes so that we will be seeing the image as if we are a viewer of the content, basically as if you were somebody just watching a video or a movie or whatever it is you made at home. If there is something that is so special about the color science of one camera compared to the color science of another camera when it comes to shooting raw or log, it should be immediately obvious to us and we should be able to see it uh, without having to wipe back and forth or without having to butt frames right next to each other. It is not for you to guess which camera shot which image. It is not a game that you're intended to have a winner or loser. There's no point system. There's no gold medal. Uh, there's no trophy for whoever gets to guess which camera shot which image. It doesn't work that way. The only important thing is for you to see each of these images and write down or mentally take note of what you think is most important when it comes to color science between these and why you'd pick one over the other. It could very well be that you can't see any difference. It could very well be also that you see tons of differences between them that other people may not see. Um, but that's the important thing for you to determine for yourself whether or not in this test the color science from those cameras is that important, is it not important at all, or is there a little bit of both? Okay, so with that, let's begin the test.
All right, so that concludes the test. I hope that you were able to write down some notes. If you haven't already, go ahead and uh, write down any notes that you might have lingering. You can even guess the cameras if you really want to, um, and uh, maybe even guess if they were shot in RAW or LOG if you couldn't really see a difference. It's good to write those things down so you can uh, remember them as we reveal which cameras shot what. We're gonna reveal which cameras were used in a moment, but what I wanna do is make sure that there's a few things said uh, beforehand. First of all, I didn't shoot these. I got the images from Carlos Quintero, and he is on YouTube. He has a great YouTube channel, so you can go and check out the content that he has. I strongly recommend going there and uh, uh, subscribing to him. Give him some likes on his videos. He has really great content uh, if you're interested in video and film production. So I also want to dispel any notion that you may have that I cheated in this test in any way. I did not cheat. Um, I didn't uh, do what a lot of people say you have to do in order to get bad color science to look at good color science, which is to make the, bad, the good one look like the bad one. I didn't do that. I'll explain what I did here briefly and I will do it in much more detail in a second video, okay? So in a nutshell, what I did was I converted each of the images from all five cameras into Rec. 709 using ACES color management. Now this is the Academy's color management system that's used on high-end productions in order to keep consistent uh, results from uh, each department and to each part of the pipeline. So in my view, if there is any kind of benefit from a color science, we should see it in this kind of instance where we have a Rec. 709 transform that it is in a process that is standardized and the same. We're not using lookup tables which are uh, independently designed by different people with different tastes and different motives and different uh, uh, ideas of what they like. Uh, so they're all basically undergoing the same kinds of transformation through ACES and ACES is used in high-end productions. If a high-end production is is using ACEs, I figure doing a test like this should be perfectly fine. When I did this conversion, I made sure that each of the images were roughly around the same exposure, and then I balanced off of the gray card, okay? And then I picked what I thought looked best out of all the images, and I graded each of the other cameras to look like the best looking image. I didn't do it the other way around. So those are the results. I hope that this was helpful to you in determining if you thought that there was a color science between any of these brands or any of these particular cameras that you liked better than the others. And I have to say that in my viewing of each of these images, I could not see enough of a difference uh, between them, even though I know every nook and cranny of these shots and what's different between each of them more than any of you have seen through YouTube. I'd have to say that the color uh, for the flesh tones on the, the woman in the shot and for the color checkers are so close that I would be happy with any of these cameras, honestly. Now, a couple of the things that are definitely different that should be pretty visible, especially on a back-to-back -back viewing, is that the time of day was a little bit different between each shot, so it's not exactly uh, scientific as far as the backgrounds go, but as far as the foreground, and the really important things, which is more of the skin tones and the color charts, I think it's pretty clear that they're about the same, even with that slight difference in the uh, color in the background. I also think that there's a difference in the sharpness uh, in each of these images. Uh, some of them look a little bit sharper than the others, but that has nothing to do with color science. Uh, and I also think that the lensing used, I think that, um, I'm not sure if it's the same lens or if it's stopped down differently or maybe the focus point is different or maybe the distance between the subject to everything might be slightly different. Um, I would guess that there are different lenses used. 
and we can see some things like chromatic aberration and bokeh differences and things like that, but really, again, that's not color science. It's not to say that between each of these that there is no difference. It's when it comes to color science, how different are they? How much does it matter? That's really what we're looking for here. Uh, and in my view, and in, again, the view of uh, anybody that I've sent this to for an evaluation, they have come to the exact same conclusion that uh, it really doesn't matter um, as far as color science. In this test, uh, clearly each of them can look uh, like each other. If they can, the, in my opinion, the worst ones can be graded to look like the best one, then you should be able to do it the other way around. If you like the way the cannons rendered, you, then you could make each of the images look like the cannons. If you like the way that the red was rendered, you can make them look like the red, and the Sony, you can make them look like the Sony. I'll tell you what this test doesn't show. Uh, it doesn't mean that uh, shooting RAW has no benefits. It doesn't mean that 10-bit log is the exact same as shooting RAW. Of course, this, this is not what that means. Um, the more data you have, obviously, the more room you're gonna have to correct your images or grade them to look how you want. That's true, um, but that's not really what we are exploring here. So I hope that you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give a like and subscribe, and uh, if you're interested in becoming a patron, please go to patreon.com slash Tony Day and sign up there. It really does help out my channel. Any of these three things really does help me out to produce more content like this, and uh, I hope to see you all again next time.